want to thank you for coming on the show tonight. I realize it's uh, 4 a.m. in your time, is it not? <laughs> it certainly is. It certainly is, yeah. Well, as you can tell from the intro, it's a crazy, crazy world, but I don't have to tell you that. You've made a number of films. Give us an overview and do just what you talk about in some of these films. One of them we played a couple portions of uh, a couple weeks ago. It was Spirit World. Yeah, well, um, there is a, a segment in my film, Spirit World. I'm actually making Spirit World 2 now. Um, my first Spirit World film came out um, last year, and... There's a part of that film that um, discusses uh, the the um, the changes, the the weather catastrophes which we're seeing right now, um, and it also discusses the fact that many ancient cultures believed that the planet, the the actual planet itself, is a super living organism, and that the pollution which we see um, happening is actually being um, is being contrived by these um, sort of ancient families that control the world economic system in order to um, kill or at least dull down the actual spirit of the planet. I think there's a shift in consciousness taking place right now, Chris. And a lot of the knowledge that has been hidden previously seems to be re-emerging, uh, exposed yep, in the light true. of day where previously we had no idea that these families existed in the past because, of course, yeah. they controlled the educational schools. So, well, today they do, but we have this information highway at our fingertips. But I'm wondering now, with all this disclosure of information, what we're really facing and what's really going on in light of these new challenges with the earth changes? Hmm. Well, um, just before we went on air, I mentioned the Kogi Indians to you. The Kogi Indians are an, an entire nation, but uh, the nation is unrecognized by um, the government of Colombia. They're unrecognized by the United Nations. Um, the Kogi Indians are based uh, just north of uh, the Santa Marta Mountains in Colombia, near uh, they're, they're not that far from Bogota, and you know this is an ancient uh, society, and they teach uh, that uh, the oil, the actual crude oil, um, is uh, rather like it. it work, the crude oil flows around the planet the same as blood flows around a human body. And the um, crude oil lubricates the tectonic plates on planet Earth. And perhaps uh, one of the reasons why we're getting, um, you know, so many earthquakes at the moment is because there are vast amounts of oil that have been taken out of the planet. And obviously the planet was never designed to, to have billions of barrels of oil taken out of it every week. And so that's just one aspect of ancient knowledge, which, um, you know, uh, th these ancient cultures in, in the Americas um, were, we, you know, we must remember that the United States of America was founded on the genocide of ancient nations such as the Kogi, the Blackfoot, the Hopi, the Cree, all of these people um, had a version of natural earth science which they which they studied and was part and parcel of their actual um, indigenous American Indian culture and the United States of America uh, was formed by Freemasons mostly Freemasons people that came from the European elite and um, the USA uh, was formed, you know, after a bloodbath of these people. And, of course, they killed those, those indigenous people, but they also deliberately suppressed and killed the information that those, those ancient nations uh, uh, used to have in their oral tra traditions. For example, their calendars. Yes, calendars, that, that, that's true. There were 
many different types of calendars. The um, most famous one was the Mayan calendar. And the Mayans were great um, astronomers, great astrologers. And if you see Mel Gibson's film Apocalypto, you can see um, that the royal elite, traditionally in history, especially with the Mayan culture, the royal elite have always been sky watchers, They've always been people that have kept information about the cosmos, about the cycle of planets, about the cycle of eclipses, especially, um, as a secret um, for the elite. And in Apocalypto, you see the Mayan royal elite uh, who mapped, actually, the sequence of eclipses, um, you know, hundreds of years in the future. Um, and you see them use this information and this knowledge and integrate these, th th this knowledge of eclipses into their rituals uh, and use that to impress the, the, uh, the crowds and the, uh, the, the lesser educated uh, members of uh, Mayan society. You know, it's very interesting, Chris, because in our own society here, it appears that the governments are preparing to deal with something around the time period of 2012. If you look at their actions and the exercises mm -hmm. and these preparations for a, uh, a catastrophic reality, it's strange because we're also coming up on the Mayan calendar of 2012, something that's um, uh, reaching its way to more and more people. The fact that a calendar does exist that ends at 2012. More people mm. are uh, well, beginning to ask themselves what it really means. Yeah, that's right. Um, well, there has been, in the European calendar, in the Roman European calendar, which we use, there is, you know, what um, people refer to as a lot of slippage. And it's not really just 2012. It's really from 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014. It's that period. Um, which is not only highlighted in the Mayan calendar, but it's also highlighted in some other um, ancient uh, texts. Uh, for example, the Oracle of Sibyl in Greece spoke about this exact same period as being a period of um, tribulation, a period of upheavals. Um, you know, there are apocryphal um, scripts as well that were, were discovered in the 1940s that date back from the early century, the first and second century of Christianity, that also refer to this, uh, this period. Um, you know, it's for sure um, a situation where what I, I believe is happening, you see, the, the word apocalypse just means a revealing, a revealing of knowledge. Apocalypse does not necessarily mean um, complete and utter meltdown and war and catastrophe. And it should be remembered that uh, the, the world's most um, popular and accurate uh, psychic from the medieval era was Dr. Nostradamus, who, who lived in, in just, just five minutes away from, from where I live now. And he foresaw a vision of the earth that continued until the year 3745. And I don't believe that uh, we're, we're on an imminent, complete, utter meltdown. What I do think is happening is that um, there's more and more people coming into the knowledge of how the European aristocratic families, since the time of the Roman Empire and just before then, have manipulated politics from behind the scenes using a whole network of secret societies and cults such as the Skull and Bones at Yale, the Bavarian Illuminati. Before then, we had the Spanish Illuminati called the Alum Alumbrados and the Vatican. And what, what I see is now millions, literally millions of people are beginning to realize that what you see on the television, what you listen to for the most part on the radio, is all influenced and manipulated by these powerful individual families. And that for me is, you know, see, apocalypse means a revealing of knowledge. 
And ten years ago, I used to mention the Illuminati to people. And they never used to know anything about it. But now, um, nearly everyone knows about and accepts that people like the Clintons, the British royal family, the Dutch royal family, um, you know, the, the what I call the royal political elite, are all actually members of, you know, the secret societies that influence politics from behind the scenes. You know, and it's funny, their trademark logos, or some have called them the gang signs, have been consistent over the course of hundreds of years, sometimes thousands of years, from the Roman fasci to the mm -hmm. fasci that sits in the United States today, also a symbol borrowed by Adolf Hitler. And we have a graphic of that as well under the fasci category. It was also in our dimes in the 1950s. Next to that, we have other symbols like the torch. We have Adolf Hitler in 36 running around the torch for the first time before it was just a symbol of something, the eternal flame used in the Olympics. And then all of a sudden we have the torch being ran around in Nazi Germany in 36 along with the rings. And here it stands today, still being run around the country today by who? China. Uh, yeah, mm. I find it all, Chris, to be just a, a wee bit sickly ironic. Yeah, I mean, those, those symbols, you're absolutely correct. They, they date back uh, to the Roman Empire and before. And in actual fact, um, if you go to Washington, D.C., you can see architectural buildings which have more or less, more or less been copied from famous buildings in the Roman Empire. And also um, there are Egyptian, Egyptian influences in the architectural layout of Washington. And in, in my film, the Antichrist Conspiracy. Um, all my Illuminati films are available for IlluminatiDVD.com. That there, there's actually a, a, a micro website for each of the, my films there. But um, the second film I made about the Illuminati network of secret societies, which is called the Antichrist Conspiracy, actually shows that the um, the plan of Washington D.C is using elements from the ancient Roman Empire, and it's also using elements from Egypt. And the canal that you have leading up to the Washington Monument, um, this is a feature that you find in underground temples in ancient Greece, uh, where oracles, these were psychic mediums who never used to go above ground, very rarely they used to, 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 to go above ground. And these psychics um, were visited by the great elite thinkers, the elite rulers of the Roman Empire, people who um, really designed the Roman Empire, people like Socrates, Aristotle, and of course Democritus. Um, now, what I should say is that the system of democracy which we saw evolve in the Roman Empire was actually a sick joke. And the people that, real, uh, that, 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 um, that created the, the democratic system where you have the Senate, um, the, the, the senators, and this ring or the, the, this house of representatives that were a buffer between the people and the royal family, the Caesars. The people that were running the democratic system in ancient Rome even admit in their own writings that the democratic system, so-called democratic system from Democritus, did not actually work once you had more than 300 people. Um, the, the, what we call democracy nowadays is really basically um, a person, a member of the public who goes into a booth, they put a, a simple cross on a scrap of paper, and remember a cross is historically... Um, you know, the substitute for a signature, a cross, is really the mark of an illiterate person. <clears throat> and they put this scrap of paper into a black box, and for the next five years, 
four years or five years, an elite can do whatever they want based on these scraps of paper. Well, who counts the scraps of paper? Well, in, in, in Britain and in many parts, uh, many countries of Europe, the ballot papers, the actual voting papers, are counted by people who work in local government. And those people are traditionally Freemasons, members of the Round Table, and members of other secret societies. There is actually no proper democracy working anywhere, in any country, anywhere on planet Earth right now. In actual fact, what we have is we have a democratic dictatorship. And a good example would be the presidential election of uh, 2004, I believe, where you had John Kerry and George W. Bush, and out of 300 million people, it just so happened that the two men out of 300 million people that were chosen to fight the presidential election were both members of the um, Skull and Bones secret society, which itself is an offshoot from a European uh, secret society that was started by Adam Weishaupt in Bavaria, in Germany, in the late 1700s. Mm -hmm. So... The, you know, the, the influence of the Roman Empire, this fake form of democracy, um, you know, we're really seeing that happening right now, not only in America, but in many other parts of the world as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Chris, where do you think they're taking our planet right now? A lot of people are, are convinced that while we're not seeing the end of the world and I'm not somebody seeing the end of the world, I'm seeing the end of this phase of civilization. Perhaps mm. engineered by someone else, there are some indicators that that's the case. But we can mm. see some things cl clearly changing with our economy and this omni side, the war on the trees, the planet itself through the genetically modified viruses and forms of yeah. life that are out there. So where do you th see things going in the next couple of years? And then I also want to ask you about some of this uh, top secret space exploration that's been going on. Okay, well... Um what I believe is happening, you know, this, this research came out when I was making Spirit World. Um, my Spirit World film actually has taken more than five years to make. What I think is, is the situation is that the planet itself is a super living organism. And we have billions and trillions of different types of living creatures, insects, and all different categories of life living on our planet. And these um, trillions of life forms are, in actual fact, physical manifestations of the will of the spirit of the actual planet to exist itself. And I believe that all planets, are actually super living organisms and they each have their own unique um, kind of system and they have their own physical system they have their own spiritual systems in actual fact the most influential most ancient um, books about magic uh, which um, are the foundation teaching uh, books which are used to teach people when they go through the initiation degrees of world international Freemasonry, Rosicrucianism, and other secret societies, those books, um, they all say that planets and stars are spirits, not only that, but um, some of the planets and stars are actually termed as angels. And in ancient Greece, Zeus, the god Zeus, is actually the planet Jupiter. And so I believe that every single planet has its own spirit. Now, what, what we see here on the Earth is we see oil being sucked out of the planet. And as I said before, the Kogi Indians consider the oil to be like the blood of the planet. We see, um, like you say, a war on the trees. Um, the actual forested areas, and remember, the whole of Europe used to be one gigantic forest. For example, the United Kingdom, especially Cornwall, Devon, Wales, 
um, that was just one never-ending forest. The whole of Ireland was an entire island forest. Deforestation is uh, not only a catastrophe for uh, the living organisms that live in those forests on the surface of the planet, deforestation is also an enormous catastrophe for the atmosphere of the planet. And our atmosphere is definitely being changed. Now, you mentioned genetic modifications. There are uh, tomatoes and other different food products in uh, mainline products and also being sold just as normal fruit and vegetables in our supermarkets, which have genes from animals injected into these fruits and vegetables. And this is no secret. There are huge investments going on right now. I'm talking about millions and billions of dollars in how um, the genetic material from certain animals can be injected into fruit and vegetables. And I'll give you an, a for example. Many of the tomatoes in Europe for sale today contain genetic material from spiders. Now, people who spend all their time planning on how to inject a tomato with the genetic material from a spider, hanging is too good for these people. They are um, trying to uh, become you know, the spiritual, physical, genetic masters of this planet. They want to live forever. Yes, yes. There's, 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 there, there is certainly a theme throughout history with all of these elite families, the, the, the richest, most powerful families on the planet. They are all, one time or another throughout their, their, their history, fascinated with the idea of uh, obtaining an elixir of life or obtaining some special genetic information. Um, a good example of that would be the Nazis, who went to the Himalayas and actually um, brought back a whole group of Tibetan lamas, Tibetan monks, to Berlin, and uh, they were formed into a, their own little, sort of mini secret society called the Men with Green Hats. And the reason that the Nazis wanted these uh, Tibetan lamas back in Germany is because um, there's a great tradition in Tibet of reincarnation, and the Tibetan Book of Living and Dying teaches you that if you um, know the signs uh, through the death experience, you can guide your soul into a fresh body, and that you will remember a lot of your previous life. And the Nazis, the elite, who, let's face it, were actually funded by... Um, banking corporations in America. Uh, Heinrich Himmler was the godchild of Prince Heinrich of Bavaria, who is in turn related to the Saxe Coburg Gotha royal dynasty of Europe. Uh, and those people are the same family as the British royal family. The Nazi, the German Nazi elite, wanted to use this ancient information to try and per perpetrate, uh, perpetuate, sorry, their souls and their spirits into fresh bodies um, forever and to rule the world forever. So, you know, the, these themes, the, these subjects are all interconnected. Do you think that some of these people are going to be successful in getting their bodies, their physical bodies, off the planet because it does seem like uh, that's in the works for some of these individuals and characters with the money to do so. I mean, they have a lunar arc they're building on the moon and that's just what we know about. The Doomsday Seed Vault, for whatever reason, uh, over near uh, Norway. And so uh, we're wondering uh, what they are aware of that we haven't been told about. Hmm. Well, <clears throat> if you go through, you know, lots of magazines especially um, magazines and newspapers published in Canada and America. Um, there are lots of companies actually making various protection-type 
panic rooms and chambers and survival uh, units which can be buried into the ground. To be absolutely honest, uh, looking through history, um, when I was making my Illuminati films, you know, I came to the conclusion that people who are scared and so afraid that they are just going to buy a survival unit and bury it into their backyard and, you know, stock up on foodstuffs and just live in the ground. This is really the ultimate goal of the Illuminati um, super wealthy families. This is exactly the way they want people to, to react. The catastrophes that you see on the news, <clears throat> you know, they are happening. But there's also uh, rumors of catastrophes, uh, c catastrophes such as economic catastrophes. <clears throat> and what the Illuminati elite families want you to do is to be scared. They want you to live in fear. Fear is a tool which they've used throughout history to um, control the population. If people are living in fear, they're less likely to organize a rebellion. And revolution is what the Illuminati families fear the most. And one of the things okay. that they do here in this country is they bombard us with so much information, most of it bad news, warped news, that a lot of people just become apathetic and completely shut down. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That That's the other... You know, that's the, that's the other main tactic which you see in, in the media. But um, I just want to say that, you know, people should not be um, looking to bury themselves in a survival chamber in their backyards. What people need to do is they need to really study the successful revolutions that have happened throughout history, and there are quite a few of them. And they need to recognize that Revolutions are generally, uh, you know, that they, they come up in cycles in history. Unfortunately, the most recent revolutions, such as the ones we saw in the Eastern Bloc countries and the Soviet Re Revolution, they were all pre-infiltrated and planned by the Illuminati families. At the time of the uh, so-called Russian Revolution, there was no internet. There was no information superhighway. Now, the elite have got a double-edged sword situation. They want the superhighway because it's great for commerce, it's great for um, advancing you know, their agendas in the economic sphere. But at the same time, they are doing as much as they can to limit uh, the information which is coming down through the internet. Now, revolution, when it's organized properly, creates no bloodshed whatsoever. In actual fact, there is a revolution happening right now where, you know, as I said before, millions of people have come into the knowledge that the uh, Illuminati network of global secret societies has existed for a long time. You used to mention these types of things 10 years ago. People used to not know a thing about them. And so we have a revolution happening now. I believe that Am I right in saying that Hillary Clinton is completely off the menu now as far as the presidency is concerned? Oh, you know, it's possible. Uh, you know, only time will tell. It's also likely that she could uh, be the vice president or in some way or another work with the Obama campaign. Oh, I see. I see. Well, you know, I, I, I said on the radio, uh, I was interviewed in Canada, coast to coast, a couple of months ago, about three months ago, I, I would say that the favored uh, presidential candidate, as far as the Illuminati family is concerned, would be Hillary Clinton. The reason for that is because the Clinton family genealogically are related to the Saxo Coburg Gothas, who are the British royal family. And Bill Clinton has already been a uh, reliable slave for the elite, and he put forward a lot of elite agendas while he was president. He bombed countries, remember. He, he continued this 
um, th th this uh, campaign of fear that I was speaking about just a little while ago. And I would have said that Hillary Clinton would have been guaranteed the White House. But you see that they're having to do a soft shoe shuffle at the moment because so many millions of people through the power of uh, independent media, the internet, independent publications are now realizing that the European royalty do control the American political system. And um, there, is, there is a revolution happening. It's happening right now, and it's happening in people's minds. Chris, before I let you go... What we need to do now is take that to the next level where uh, people, everyday people, normal people, start soaking up and taking opportunities to take what little parts of democratic power they can get in their local communities. And if we all invest some time and we all get involved in local government, in the mayor's office, we all take uh, a few hours out of our lives to sit on the local boards which um, scrutinize police activity and scrutinize uh, the judicial system, such as uh, in Britain and Canada and in, in the British Commonwealth countries, lots of people can just become justices of the peace. We need to see normal, everyday family people who are aware of the Illuminati's influence throughout history to take up positions of local demo democratic power and then to grow an entire grassroots democratic system and eventually throw away this ridiculous democratic system we have where the elite these puppets such as John Kerry and George W. Bush in front of us uh, on the media, and we need to start having real democracy, which in actual fact we've never had so far. Chris, you have a couple websites. EnigmaTV.com yes. is one of them. Yes. Um, there, there's a website for my Illuminati series of films. It's IlluminatiDVD.com. And my Spirit World film is available on spiritworlddvd.com. Yes, and I've seen a couple of them. They're great. And you have David Icke featured in several of them. And I see yeah. uh, Alex Jones in uh, one of your more recent ones as well. Yeah, Alex, Alex is uh, featured in The Antichrist Conspiracy. Um, there's a website for that film, which is antichristdvd.com. Well, Chris, thank you so very much for coming on. Okay, well, it's been a pleasure, Alex.